This is the PlayStation 5 game stick. Look at that. The Chinese don't waste time, my friends. It's the clock that wastes time. The guys went and put in the PS5 design. The box here is just like the PS5, but it's a game stick with 1 million games for you to play by plugging it into your TV. This console is sometimes called with a plus in its name, but the curious thing is that their technical configurations are the same. Pay attention to the details and tell me if this could be a PlayStation 5. Maybe the PlayStation 5 would work here, but I think the answer is pretty clear. Let's see. Even the way it looks, the box, the things written on the back, it's totally the PlayStation 5 box. There's no denying that. But this is the M15 Pro, which comes with the Chinese PS5 controller as well, which runs 3D games in 4K output. Yeah, I know. And look at this little symbol here, it keeps appearing on all the boxes. Could it be a generic cartel, or do the companies make all the game sticks the same? But that's basically it, the box is all blue, it's even bulging here because it's full of stuff. Game stick. This one is 128 GB with 30,000 games. Impressive, my goodness. And look at the back. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's designed like a PlayStation 5, kind of wavy here and everything. Look, there's our big pen drive that we call a stick, but you plug it into the HDMI. And this has a 4K Pro game stick, and I think that makes it 100% better. Now, it would only be perfect if it had RGB, and that's the standard scheme. Here we have the adapter to connect the controller and you plug it in, and here's the power cable for you to plug in so it can turn on and work. Our controllers come with it. I think these controllers here are nicer to play with than the standard PS2 controllers we always see. I find it more comfortable than the PlayStation 2 controller and this one weighs half a gram too. It's battery operated. There's no way you can charge it on USB, but I'm sure they'll provide that soon while I'm making this video. They could evolve it here, but obviously it would make the controller more expensive, the product more expensive. You put in two batteries and it works like a charm. The construction looks good. But I'm always amazed at how the guys copy it so hard and have no shame, right? It's very similar to the PS5 controller, man. The box also comes with the cable for you to plug in the power cable and the HDMI extender that people always warn you to use the adapters to prevent the controller from lagging, and there's also the manual, which is written in Chinese. But there should be an English version. This device is equipped with a Duod-Core Cortex A7 CPU that operates at up to 1 GHz and has 256 MB of RAM, 1 DDR3. The system is Emulec. As such, it's designed to run even PS1 games, with possible frame drops in some games. There's Atari, Capcom with arcade games, PC Engine, and a Nintendo 8-bit. This NES here I have no idea what it is, but it has a lot of games. And so on with Game Boy, Super Nintendo, the Super Famicom, and many others. PlayStation 2. There's no PSP, apparently it's just PlayStation 1 downwards then. Finally, there are arcade games too. Let me take a look at the list of Super Nintendo games. Here's Yoshi's Island. Here's Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario RPG under another name, F-Zero, The Legend of Zelda. Look at that, it's more or less organized, right? Now let's see Mega Man X. The screen is stretched, but that's okay. But the game is running smoothly here in my opinion. There's a delay on the controller so that when you press shoot, for example, the response is slow. Super Mario World now, and you can't miss it and the analog stick has a certain bizarre delay. You press it to one side, then it takes a long time, and then goes back to the command you were asked for. I get the feeling that they've simply taken the same system and put it here, the system from other game sticks. Now, a Sunset Riders, which will run smoothly here. This was Konami's good time, I think. Now we're going to see F-Zero, just to see if the game stick does well with any games that have special graphics with 3D effects. I really want to see how it works on the PlayStation 1, which is apparently the limit of this game stick here. F-Zero is flowing well, the music isn't crashing, it's cool. 
Moving on to the Game Boy Advance, there's Contra Dragon Ball, among others. And here we have Super King Kong and I imagine Donkey Kong Country. Let's take this. You know that nowadays we play all these emulators, even PSP and PS2 emulators on our cell phones. A curious fact is that the Game Boy Advance was launched, if I'm not mistaken, in 2000 or 2002, close to the launch of the PlayStation 2. Some people say that PS2 games aren't old, even though they are. They have 3D graphics and so on, and when you see 2D games like that you think they're older, but the Game Boy is practically the same age as the PS2. And when the Game Boy launched the Game Boy Advance, it was an evolution as if it were a pocket Super Nintendo, practically. This game was very good and difficult. I played it on the PlayStation 1, and it was really hard, bro. It had a bit of a Metal Slug vibe, only much more strategic, since you can't go shooting all the time or your bullets will run out. And the graphics were just like on the PlayStation 1, except that it's a very difficult game. There are a lot of Game Boy Advance games and they should all run well. You can also filter the games if you want to search for something, so it's easier if the name is correct here. And that goes for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. It also goes for the Super Nintendo and both run without any problems. There are many consoles, it's much like all the other game sticks out there, with a certain standard Emulec organization. Looking at the PS1 now, there aren't that many games. Of course, it depends on the size of the SD card, whether it's 64 or 128. Let's see how Crash does here. My goodness, look at those graphics, all checkered. I know PlayStation 1 is like that, but there are some game sticks that look better. They have better processing that makes it look better. Wow, man, there's a Crash here. Look, an FPS drop. And lo and behold, another game set up all messed up. You press square, nothing happens. And looking at that performance, the PS1 is the limit of the limit. I'd say it's playable, but it's a bit slow. I don't know if you can tell, but it feels like it's running at less than 20 FPS. Let's take a look at Tom and Jerry. The Tom and Jerry game could also be played in pairs, one against the other, and that game was challenging. It's going well here. Yeah, although it doesn't have too many 3D elements to make the game heavy. I'd say it's fine to play without too much hassle. Now a little bit for you about Fighting Force, which is a very 3D street game with lots of enemies, more like the PS1 era. Wow, this one's a bit slower, so I think it'll be fine. Did you play Fighting Force? I confess I didn't play much. Look at the effects in the back. What is that? The graphics are good and it's running well here. Here for the curious, which I think is a bit difficult for anyone to be curious about whether this game stick is worth it or not. But there are plenty of games. CPS1 mainly like King of Fighters, Samurai Showdown and Street Fighter 2. This is the arcade version and the good thing is that we have infinite chips here. And this version of Street Fighter I think is very nice, but it still has a bit of a delay, for a change. So far so good, it may be that some other arcade game won't do so well, but I think the main ones will be fine. For classic arcade games, there are other consoles that come with arcade-style equipment. I've forgotten the name now, but it must be something like the Pandora. It sounds interesting. It comes with that little lever, right, and the little buttons for you to press. It looks interesting, but that's basically it. A lot of little games, little Atari games that don't interest me that much. I don't think you're that interested either, although some of these games sticks promise but don't run. Enduro is interesting. This is graphic evolution, guys. We practically started here, look. That's right, Activision making racing games, and that's basically it, you're dodging the cars over there. I usually try to show the main games and emulators, but there's always something missing, so just leave it in the comments and I'll reply. If I stop to show all the games on all the emulators, it'll be three hours of video. I know that the Mega Drive will be fine, so it's up to you. But then is it worth spending your hard-earned money on this game stick with the interesting PlayStation 5 design which is the M15 Pro? 
I think the answer, although personal, is no. Okay, it costs around $16 for the 64GB version and the design of the controls is interesting, but there are better devices out there with equivalent prices. However, if the list presented here interests you, even if you're aware of the limitations, that it might be a good idea. For example, for this price you can get a GD10 that can even run some PSP games and I made a video about it months ago. Of course it won't run God of War at its best, but at this price for the M15, it's not worth it in my opinion. There's also the Y6 which I've already talked about here on the channel, and it's more expensive but the performance is much better, sometimes even PSP. And finally there's the Y7, which is a console with a great device and is more expensive. I've already talked about all of them here on the channel. Anyway, I'll leave the link to this device in the description. If you enjoyed the video please like it, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.